Hey everybody, it's me, Angela Walters. Welcome to this week's live chat. Um, about every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central, I go live and I talk about machine quilting stuff, answer your questions live, and just have a great old time. And if you're watching me live, thank you so much. I appreciate it. As always, Jessica is behind the camera. She is gonna write down your questions so you can type them in the chat if you want me to address them during the live chat. And also she's kicking out the bad um, spammers too. So appreciate that. If you're not watching it live, no worries. Um, you can leave your questions in the comments and I get on there from time to time and answer them. So very, very excited about that. This is kind of a third live chat in a series. So two weeks ago, we kind of talked about needles and then we talked about thread or vice versa. And this week we're gonna kind of pull it all together and talk about tension. It's like, I feel like if I had sound effects, it'd be like the dun, dun, dun. Um, thread tension or thread issues when you're machine quilting is just one of those incredibly frustrating things that can happen to new quilters and experienced quilters alike. And in today's live chat, I'm gonna share some tips on how to handle that, tips on you know how to prevent that. But before we even get into any of that, I have to tell you that there's no great way to like diagnose any tension issues over the phone or over you know the live chat. The thing is, when you're dealing with a tension problem or a thread problem, the good news is it's a small cause most of the time. The bad news is it could be one of a hundred small things. So there's no clear set roadmap to follow to take you to perfect tension every time as far as like do this thing. <laughs> um, so, but I will tell you that the more comfortable you get with working with your threads, with messing with the tension and quilting, the more it will work itself out. I like to use the analogy of like driving a car. When my kids started learning how to drive, my car didn't work so well. It was jerky, it was going all over the place. Well, it's kind of how they were driving it. So the good news is, is even if you're struggling with it, you'll get, you'll get over it and it'll be, it'll be fine. So try not to be too, too frustrated. So I'm gonna show you some slides and some information. There's no way to make all this information look interesting. There's a lot of words, a lot of things, not very many pictures, but hopefully you'll find it helpful and, and will help you kind of deal with some of those those tension issues. So we're going to just recap real quick when we talked about thread. So important that you use high quality thread. I cannot state that enough. And if you watched my live chat two weeks ago, you know that if I am moving my fabric or my machine in all different directions, I'm putting tension on that thread in all different directions. So it will really show up if you're having any kind of tension issues if you're not using quality thread. Now, beyond that, as long as the thread is for machine quilting, you can use whatever kind or whatever type that you want. And so there is some freedom within there. Um, like I said during the live chat, I suggest sticking within the 40 to 50 weight for newer quilters if you're looking for a guideline, um, just because that seems to be the sweet spot of thin enough to kind of blend in, but not so thin or thick that you have to start you know, making um, those changes with those finicky types of thread. So when you're working with your machine quilting and you are trying to deal with tension, always check that thread, make sure it's good quality. Um, like I said, during the live chat, you can cut corners, but I wouldn't cut corners on that. <laughs> and then last week we talked about needles, right? So the other component of that, very important, using the correct size of needle for the type of thread that you're using. And that's across the board, whether you're using a sewing machine or a long arm, because the parts of the needle are, cha are they change depending on the size that you're using. So when I'm asked a lot um, in person, what size needle do I use? It depends on the thread that I'm using. So check with your manufacturer, um, check with the thread manufacturer, you can do that too. And um, I would use the needles that your machine manufacturer suggests. So for instance, if I'm using a handy quilter long arm, I'm gonna use handy quilter needles. I wanna take any variables out of the picture. I don't wanna have any, any wild cards. I want it to be set. So you can check with that and um, figure how that works in there. But once you get to that point, you have your needle, you have your threads. Now this is where we're gonna get to the good stuff. The tension adjustment. How do I adjust that tension? And more importantly, how do I troubleshoot when things aren't going well? Um, so first of all, we kind of talked about this already, but what is tension or what is the tension? It's when that stitch, that top thread of that bobbin thread come together in the middle of the quilt. That is perfect tension. And if you think about how much space that leaves us, it's not a whole lot of room, right? So there's not a, there's a, there's a small margin there, you know? Um, so if the thread is joining at the top or at the bottom of the quilt, then that is poor tension. So we want those to join in the middle. And the analogy that you sometimes hear is like a tug of war, right? I had those two threads pulling the same 
tension on each other so that they meet in the middle. And when that doesn't happen, that's when we have to make adjustments to make it work. So here are some examples of a good stitch, right? What does a proper stitch look like? So when I think of a stitch, I think of a defined section of thread with two holes on either side. If I just see a line, if it's just like a running line, that means the tension is bad. I'm seeing the other thread pull up. So you should see almost like a little hole on each side, a well-defined stitch. Um, of course, if it's not exactly there, it's, it's close, as long as it's doing its job and holding the layers of those fabric together. Now, it's when we don't have that perfect stitch that we have to make adjustments on that tension. And when we adjust tension, we're just changing up that tug of war between those two threads. That's all we're doing. So we don't have to make it too scary. So for instance, on the right side, if we have top tension that is too tight, we're gonna see that bobbin thread on the top, right? So you're gonna be quilting along and you see the bobbin thread on the top and you know, ooh, that tug of war is being won by the top thread. Or if I see the top thread on the back, which in my experience is the case most of the time, it looks beautiful on the top, and then I turn around or you know, load it on my frame and I see the, the uh, top thread popping through. You might hear those called railroad tracks, um, something like that. What's happening is that top thread is losing the tug of war and that bottom thread is pulling too far down. So when we have that situation, we need to make adjustments and, and get that back into where it needs to be. Now, this is an example of the back of a quilt seeing the top thread through the back. So this is what a railroad track would look like. In this example, knowing it's the back, um, what I need to do is tighten that top thread to pull it back up there. So understanding the stitch formation is so important to adjusting your tension, so important. When I started quilting, you know, all those years ago, I didn't know what I was doing and I was making all sorts of mistakes trying to fix the problem. If I would have just stopped and thought about what is happening with that stitch, then I can start making adjustments at that point. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, but here's an example of some quilting that isn't bad, right? I don't see the top thread, but notice how it looks like just one kind of running line. I don't see that well-defined stitch. That, that means I'm close, but I still need to make slight adjustments. So it's not the end of the world if it looks like that, but definitely it's not that perfect stitch that I'm looking for. I usually try to get that tension dialed in. That way, as I'm moving my way around the quilt, if there are parts that aren't perfectly tensioned, then it kind of gives me that, that wiggle room there. One thing I want to point out, and we'll talk about this, I think, towards the end, when I'm talking about tension, we're just talking about those two threads together, that tug of war. Um, when the tension is off, it's going to be off all the time. So for instance, if I have a situation where maybe I can only see the top thread on the back on the points of a design, that might be a slightly different thing. So if the tension is fine sometimes and not fine others, it might not be tension, it might be a thread issue. So when we're looking at that tension and we're making those adjustments, that's how we're gonna be looking at. So there are things that can affect your tension, right? If, if I go from a 50 weight thread to a 40 weight thread, then I'm gonna have to make some adjustments to you know, even out that tug of war. But sometimes you might notice you haven't changed the type of thread and you still have to adjust your tension. Well, what is that all about? Um, fabric, so most often we quilt with cotton, um, that's great, but if you have fabric that's densely woven, like a batik, um, something that's really tight, it's gonna give a little bit more tension on that fabric and you might see some tension issues with that. Or let's say you have um, fabric that has some kind of painting on it. So sometimes you see uh, fabric that has maybe sparkles or whatever, anything that is on top of that is gonna slow the speed of that needle through there and you might see tension issues. Not that it's not able to quilt, but just know that it might give you some hard times. Um, of course, if I adjust between weights of thread, if I move from one size to the next, I'll have to make adjustments there, of course. Um, and then quilting. If I'm quilting inconsistently, for instance, let's say I'm on my sewing machine and I'm kind of going fast and slow, but the machine is not kind of in sync with my hands, I might see some areas where the tension is worse than others. So getting to a point where you can quilt consistently, which comes with practice, no stress there, but when you get that consistent movement down, you might just you might see that tension kind of work itself out. In fact, when I'm teaching classes in person, I usually tell my class, we're not even gonna talk about tension or stitch length until the end of the class, because sometimes it works itself out as somebody gets more comfortable with the quilting process. If you think about, let's say I'm on a sewing machine and my machine is going really slow, but I'm pushing really fast, 
that needle is in the quilt sandwich longer than normal and I might be bending it. So again, just sometimes that plays a role into it. And then batting, different lofts of batting might require some tension adjustments, but it's not gonna require a lot. So one of the things that I kind of found myself doing when I started quilting is I would have a tension problem and I would start cranking on things and turning things. If it's just a small change, you won't need a small adjustment, right? You won't need a big adjustment. Let me back up and make this sound better. For instance, if I go from 40 weight to a 50 weight thread, that's not a big jump. So it shouldn't take too much adjusting on the tension to get to that point. So just keep that in the back of your mind because if you find that you're adjusting, adjusting, adjusting and nothing is happening, that might not be the problem. So when we're ready to adjust our thread, we can see the tension is not correct. Maybe we know why, maybe we don't know why. Um, we're gonna go through a set of steps. And so this is kind of how I like to talk through it. First, make sure your, th your machine is threaded correctly. In fact, that should be the first two steps. Check the threading, check the threading. What I don't wanna do is make any adjustments on the tension only to find out that it wasn't threaded correctly and now I need to fix the problem I just created. So this is especially the case if you're having tension problems out of the blue, nothing's changed, you're like, oh, the stitches look bad, check that threading. I cannot say that enough. Another thing I did a lot in the beginning, it was make a lot of adjustments and then realize, oh, it's not in the tension discs and now I need to remember what I did and take it back to that point. Make sure your bobbin is wound correctly. This is kind of the wild card. If you notice that your tension is good and bad and good and bad and no matter what you do, it's just all over the place, check your bobbin. That bobbin should be wound tightly and smoothly. If there's any squishiness to it, if it hasn't wound evenly, like it looks kind of like a cone, that means it's not gonna feed consistently and you're gonna get that inconsistent tension which will drive you nuts. So if that happens, unwind that bobbin and rewind it. Or maybe it's wound correctly, but you notice that every time you use this particular bobbin, it's not working. It could be that it's bent. So make sure that you know, if you notice it's the bobbin, then it goes in the trash. <laughs> so um, bobbin important, machine quilted, and then of course your needle is in correct. Um, we talked about this last week, but if the needle is in backwards, it's not gonna be able to make a stitch. And so that will obviously lead to problems there. All right, once we've determined everything is fine, go ahead and pause, go get yourself a drink of wine or whatever it is that you like to partake of, get yourself in a calm headspace, and then adjust the bobbin tension if applicable. So the only reason I put the bobbin tension on here is this is mostly geared towards my long armors. Now I know that some sewing machines do have the ability to adjust your bobbin tension, but on the long arm, this is truly important. I wanna get that bobbin tension set to that good spot, and then I'm never gonna to touch it again unless I change the bobbin thread. So for instance, if I have my, I don't, I should have grabbed my bobbin here, but um, if I have my bobbin in there, I'm gonna pull up the thread and that bobbin case should pull nice and smoothly down. It shouldn't unravel really fast. It shouldn't hang. And that lets me know that that bobbin tension is in a range, that acceptable range. Then now any adjustments I'm gonna make are gonna be on the top thread. So again, double check this wound correctly, make any adjustments on your bobbin if you need to, but they're gonna be small adjustments. Think like seconds on a clock, just teeny adjustment and test. When you get it to that applicable range, the only reason you should change the tension there is because you've changed your bobbin thread. This is so important because when I was learning how to quilt, I would tighten the top and tighten the bobbin and for that tug of war, it's not doing anything. It's canceling each other out. And so by only adjusting one part of that tug of war, it's gonna make it a lot easier to narrow it down. So if you don't have to, if you don't have the ability to, to adjust your bobbin thread, then that's good. That's one less variable to think about. But if you do, make sure that it's where that needs to be. Then when we start making adjustments to our top, right, we're gonna tighten or loosen depending on your machine manufacturer, what you've got going on. But remember, if we think about that tug of war, if I'm seeing that bobbin thread at the top, that means my top thread is winning that tug of war and I'm gonna loosen it so that it goes back in place. So I'm gonna adjust it and then test it. Adjust it and then test it. Um, on my long arm, I make about half a turn on that knob, maybe almost a full turn. They're bigger movements than on the bobbin um, or on my sewing machine, I'll go in smaller increments. And I'm gonna adjust and test in little bits. I'm not gonna just, again, crank that tension or turn it all the way up and start pushing buttons. I'm gonna just a little bit and test it. And we should see some improvement if I've adjusted it three or four times 
and nothing is changing, that is a good indication that that's not the problem. So you should see some adjustment happening when you're, when you're um, trying it out. Now, when I'm testing out my, my bobbin or test, testing out my thread, checking that tension, I'll have a scrap piece of fabric for my sewing machine or on my long arm, I'll go off to the edge where the batting is. And I like to quilt circles because if you can keep good tension throughout a circle, usually you're gonna be golden for the rest of the designs. So just keep that in mind. All right, on the long arm, this is specifically to my long armers here. Um, when we're threading your machine, most long arms have two tension discs that hold that thread. It's the same on a sewing machine, except when we raise or lower our feed dogs on, or our foot on the sewing machine, it opens up those tension discs. On a long arm, that doesn't happen. So I need to make sure that that thread is pulled in between those tension discs. Because if I make adjustments on them and the thread's not in there, I now have a different problem to deal with. And what can happen is sometimes we keep making adjustments, we don't see a difference, and we tighten those discs so tight that now we can't get the thread up in between there if we tried. So check, 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 make sure it's in between those tension discs. And you might think, well, I did thread it like that. It's totally fine. Go ahead and check because sometimes when you're quilting with, let's say, a slicker thread, it might work itself out sometimes. So double check that because what you don't want to do is, like I said, realize that's a problem and then now have another problem to fix. Okay, on a sewing machine, I'm not, I don't, have as much tension problems on a sewing machine, uh, but this was straight from Superior Threads website talking about you know the commonly used tension settings for your sewing machine. Check with your manufacturer, check with your owner's manual, see how to make adjustments on that. And when you're trying these things for the first time, especially um, on a sewing machine, make a note of any settings or take a picture with your phone of any settings that your machine is on before you start playing around with it. Again, because if there is a simple fix and you now need to go get it back to where it was, you'll have that kind of on, on hand to, to work with. Okay, so when we talk about tension, we're not necessarily talking about thread issues. And sometimes they kind of get lumped in together. So for instance, sometimes somebody will say, the tension went out on my machine. Well, it's not a part, it didn't go out. But sometimes thread issues can manifest themselves as bad tension. Most times what people are dealing with are thread issues. So if we think about that, that tension, if it meets in the center, but my bobbin is so tight that my top has to be so tight to pull it up to that point, I'm gonna see things like puckering or gathering or where it just looks like it's you know really tight together. Um, especially if you see shredding. That means there's just so much tension on that top thread um, and it's, it's giving too much friction at the needle. That's why having that bobbin thread set at that acceptable range is gonna help with that. Or let's say my bobbin tension is too loose. Then that means my top thread has to be looser as well, and that's gonna give me kind of a sloppy looking stitch. So if you ever quilted and you're like, man, I mean, it, the tension's fine, but it just looks a little sloppy, that could be why. This again is um, you know, geared more towards people that can adjust the tension on their bobbin, but just know that having that set tension is, is really important. Okay, what do we do when things don't go right? It does seem to happen that it's a big project we're working on, a last minute deadline, I gotta get this thing done by tomorrow, and then that's when the, t the thread gives us issues. So let's talk about how we're gonna handle that. Like I said, if you're having thread issues, the good news is 99% chance it's a small thing. We just have to figure out what that thing is. So first, you need to calm down. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm what I like to call a fast sinker. I'm going along, everything's great, I love this, but once it starts going bad, it's like So I know I can get really like overwhelmed and start not thinking straight, so calm down. Make sure your machine is threaded correctly, so important. And then we gotta start playing detective. This is one of my favorite things that I like to do with new owners, new long arm owners that buy their machines from us because I'm like, this is, a detective case, right? It was working and now it's not. Something has changed and we need to figure that out. Now, sometimes we'll know what changed. Sometimes it won't be so obvious. So for instance, let's say you're quilting halfway through the quilt and the tension, the thread's breaking, it's snapping, it's shredding, whatever. Um, ask yourself, what has changed? Did I change the bobbin? Have I changed the thread? Did I use a different quilt? That's gonna help point me in a direction so I can start I don't know, troubleshooting those different things. 
Um, did I drop my bobbin case on the floor? Is it possible that it's bent? So whenever you know I'm helping talk somebody through that, I always tell them I'm not giving you a third degree. I'm just trying to help get all the clues to find where we're going. Now, test. Change the bobbin and test. And what that's going to do is just help help you know, A, what fixed it, and B, keep you from doing things that will counteract each other. So um, again, just one thing at a time. And especially if you're newer to this, I might suggest even keeping a spiral notebook and writing down each of the things you've done. It'll do a couple things. It will let you see what eventually fixed it, but it will also let you see like, okay, this is what I've done if I need to go back and undo any of those things. Now, as I'm testing, if I don't see that it's making a difference, it's probably not the issue. Now, this is not you know, straight across the board, but the idea is, let's say the tension is off and I'm tightening, 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 and it's not doing anything. That's a good indication that's probably not the issue and I should probably move on to a different option there. Um, so when we're doing that, a couple other things I'll talk about, I'm gonna come back to the camera real quick. So when you're troubleshooting and you're kind of going through those things, it's just kind of know that it, you'll get more comfortable with it. Um, and as you work through things, you'll, you'll realize, oh, okay, this fabric gives me trouble or this particular thread likes this needle. So keeping that spiral notebook will be very, very helpful for you. Now, again, I know it's not super helpful if you're like, but my tension is bad right now. How do I handle it? Because it's not like I could just troubleshoot over the, the um, phone or the computer, like I said. But as you get more comfortable and as you see these things come up, you'll, you'll get better and better at it. So I'm going to take your questions in just one second. A couple last minute things for the long armors out there. Um, if your quilt sandwich is too tight on the frame, if it's stretched so taut, what that can do is that can make your fabric basically like a drum and it's really hard for the needle to get through there. So if you're seeing tension issues, it could be that your quilt sandwich is a little too tight. And that could be super frustrating because you might be making all the adjustments on the machine and, and it's just your quilt sandwich. You'll know that that's a problem if the quilt sandwich is vibrating as you quilt. That's a good indication that it is too tight. So um, that's just a little aside there. Um, to help you there. All right, so questions, lots of questions. Good. Does your hand hurt or what? <laughs> She's so great. She just writes them down for me. We're, we're super high tech here. What can I say? All right, does glide thread have any low shine thread? So glide is um, just one of the types of thread from Haberdash threads. There is a 60 weight um, glide that is thinner, so it doesn't shine as much. And they also have some other ones too, but that's a good, good option. Um, I always use glide thread, but sometimes shredding does happen. Is that the needle? All right, so this is one of those, you know, um, deducing things. If shredding is happening, if it's happening at the eye of the needle, it could be that the needle is too small. You can go up in size and see if that helps. It could also be, if it's snapping, I know that doesn't say that here, but sometimes with that slicker thread, it will fall, especially if you have like an upright cone, if it falls underneath, it might get stuck under the cone. So if you see that randomly, that can do that too. Um, so uh, glide thread shredding, it could be, it could be the needle. Um, I will say on a long arm, not to keep going back to long arm, but there are some differences there. The way that the long arm mechanism works is that it prefers going left to right. So if I'm doing really long straight lines from right to left, I might see shredding there, but um, probably the needle. Hope that helps. What are the bolts of fabric behind you? So pretty. Oh, wrong way. Thank you. Um, Jessica makes it look so nice back here. I don't have any hand in that, which is good. She's just a great little set designer. When you have black and white fabric, what color thread do you use? It depends. I mean, you knew I was going to say that, right? Um, it depends on the ratio, right? Is it black solid and white solid? If I have to pick, I'll probably do a gray, maybe a light to medium gray that kind of hits the difference. Um, but if it's a black and white print, like one fabric with black and white, it's probably going to be kind of busy and you won't see the quilting anyway. So whichever one you have. I have a Simply 16 and use glide thread. What size needle should I use? So Simply 16 is a long arm or you're moving the machine. I would do a 16 or an 18 needle. Would I consider putting this info into a downloadable tip sheet? Absolutely. Yeah, I could totally do that. So I'll, I'll put this one aside so I remember to do that and do that for next week. My tension is good left to right, but not right to left. Any suggestions? It'd be interesting to know if you're on a sewing machine or a long arm. If you're on a sewing machine, it could be that the quilt is hanging too hard on one direction, and so you have to pull harder one way than the other. And that's where that kind of consistent movement comes in. Um, and any bit of dragging on that quilt is going to mean you're not quilting quite as fast, and you might see some tension there. On a long arm, um, 
if you're doing, like I said, those long straight lines, you might see some shredding with that. And that, that's not to mean that you can't move right to left on your long arm. That just means if I'm doing straight lines over the whole quilt, I'm probably just gonna go to the left side and, and do it that way. Hope that helps. As far as quilting speed, why is it when I switch from regulated to cruise, why is it when I switch from regulated cruise to manual that my stitches grow too much, much longer? So stitch length is another one of those fun things that you know you can't do for somebody. It just takes that practice, but it is the ratio of the movement of the machine or your hands to the motor, to that needle up and down. The analogy I like to use for this is like driving a manual car, right? That play in between the clutch and the gas and finding that sweet spot as you're working. So keep that kind of analogy in mind. When you're in manual, and that means the machine is just running at the same speed and however fast I move the machine means that will determine the stitch length. That's actually how I quilt all the time. And this would be the case even if you're on a sewing machine without a stitch regulator. If my stitches are bigger than I like, that means my machine is moving too slow for the speed of my hands. My fabric is moving fast in between that stitch and giving me a big stitch. So that just means I need to speed my machine up a little bit faster. Um, and if you're on a sewing machine, that means push the pedal down. And then vice versa, if I have tiny stitches, that means I need to slow down the machine. Of course, you could adjust your hand speed, but I think it's a good idea to try to make your machine match your hands, because your hands are gonna do what they wanna do anyway, so sometimes that helps. But I will say, when it comes to stitch length, as long as you don't get your foot caught in it when you pull the quilt over you, it's fine. So I know it's one of those things that we really want to be perfect and it will work itself out and it will look great when you have practice, but don't stress out too much about it. It will just take the joy out of it. One thing to verify, on the top tension, the markings are one through 10. Is one the loosest and 10 the tightest? I think so, but every machine is different. So again, I would just consult your owner's manual, consult your sewing machine manufacturer or your long arm, whatever, and just see what it says. But as I'm making adjustments, whatever direction it is, right to tighten, left to loosen, whatever, I'm gonna just make small adjustments and test. Do I use pins or snaps when loading my quilt top? And I'm assuming on the long arm. Um, I use pins. So I just do the leaders. I know there's like red snappers and some cool aftermarket things, but the longer I quilt, the more I realize I'm an old dog with new tricks. And so I've always used corsage, corsage pins and I just stick with that, so. Um, a lot of great stuff, that's just what I like to work with. After my thread comes out of the large tension knob on the long arm, it looks like it's twisting. Do you know why? So, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know why. Um, it depends on the thread. For instance, Glide is a trilobal, or it's a twisted pieces, and that kind of gives it, so sometimes it can untwist if it's really tight on that tension. Or, let's say the thread should be on a horizontal winder and it's coming up, so sometimes it twists as it comes up. I wouldn't worry too much about it as long as if everything's fine, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, I think that's about all I can think of. Um, it's just how the thread is made. And sometimes, especially if we've just cut it, especially at the end, and the, it's just kind of unraveling at that point. So kind of like when we're rethreading our machine or our, our hand sewing needles, we have to kind of give it a fresh cut. Sometimes that will help. Um, the only time the horizontal spool thing comes into play is if it is something that needs to come off a certain way. So you could check with the thread manufacturer and see if that helps. But even if it's kind of untwisting a bit, if it's quilting fine, then I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, thank you so much for your questions. I know it's kind of a big, hairy topic to just tackle in, in a 30-minute live chat, but I'm hoping I can give you some tips and some things that make you like, okay, I, I think I can handle this. Um, now, next week, I won't be here for the live chat. I'm going to be out of town, but I'll be back two weeks from today for a live chat and topic to be different topic to be determined. I'll come up with something fun. But until then, everybody, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're having fun and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Until